Want to learn how to do this? If you're like me, you've been searching for the secret to aerial car control. Looking for that one thing that's going to just make it all click. Trust me, I was in the same boat. Listening to people tell me that if I press my stick down and to the left, I'll turn right and that I constantly have to grind it out in order to get the muscle memory. But all of that is wrong. In order to build muscle memory, you first have to give your muscles something to memorize. Constantly flailing your car through the air until it makes sense isn't going to work. That's why we have to break it down to its most basic and easy understandable pieces. I'm aware that other videos claim to do this, but trust me when I say I went from this to this in around a week just from figuring this out. It was too good not to share, so let's get into it. Directional air roll is incredibly important because it automatically rotates your car on its Z axis at a perfect zero degrees, whereas standard air roll would require a perfect 90 degree input from center, and even then doesn't allow for the complete range of motion directional air roll does. By default, these are not bound, so you're going to need to bind either air roll right or air roll left to a button. It's important that you choose a button or key binding that is natural and intuitive for you to use. Since you're going to be incorporating it into the existing button layout, it's best to find a button that's easy to access and doesn't hinder your car's movement or ability to perform other mechanics. For me, I chose to bind air roll left to my L1 or left bumper if you're on an Xbox controller. Now that we have that, let's start with basic car control. I'm certain most of you can already do this, so for my new players, this is an important fundamental part that makes everything so much easier to control and understand. For everyone else, I've left a timestamp in the description that jumps straight to the air roll control section. Like many tutorials before this, we aren't reinventing the wheel. It's good to be able to practice flying from one side of the map to the other, using the opposite goal as a point of reference to where you're going to be flying. After some time of that, I strongly encourage those wanting to get as much control as possible to do so flying your car either on its left or right side and also inverted. Because your car's controls never change, only the orientation, it's crucial that you're able to understand how to steer your car when it's not facing you or the direction your camera is facing. Now then, since we've gotten you up into the air, let's practice holding your position in the air. This technique will single-handedly be the biggest building block for doing things like rings maps or flying trials. For my console folks, have no fear. We're going to get to how you can work on this too in just a little bit. For now, let's work on hovering. Simply jump into the air, tilt your car's nose up by pulling back on the left stick, and tapping or feathering your boost to maintain your height. Your only goal here should be to keep your car still. You shouldn't need to move left or right, but only forward and backwards. Perfect. Easy enough. Now, before we can move to the next stage of that, we have to sidestep real quick over to another mechanic that needs to be addressed. Earlier, we looked at binding our directional air roll and showed off what it does versus standard air roll. The biggest reason higher ranked players and freestylers use directional air roll over standard is because once you have the mastery of movement down while spinning your car, you actually have a more consistent and controlled 360 degree range of motion while in the air. I'm sure if you've ever played around with this, you've more than likely tried spinning and pushing your car in all sorts of directions only to black out and crash into the wall or floor. Trust me, it's only hard until you understand a couple of very key parts. While you're on the ground, we want to press and hold jump, hold our directional air roll, and then push the stick in a singular direction. In this case, I'm pressing my left stick to the right and holding down air roll left, commonly known as a tornado spin. Pressing the stick in the opposite direction is, no surprise, a reverse tornado spin. Holding it down is a cuxer twist, and up is a reverse cuxer twist. The names are fun, but not super necessary to know. They will not be on the test. I'm wanting to show you these movements not because there's a special trick or direction you can press in order to make your car move left or right at any given time. Some tutorials will tell you that in order to turn your car one way, you need to push your stick whatever direction they tell you to turn. The truth is, this really only works under specific circumstances. I'm not saying they're wrong, I'm simply saying they aren't giving you enough to fully control your car. Doing a specific button input when your car is facing the same way every time can be helpful, but in terms of a mechanic that is constantly changing your car's direction and orientation, I found it much more beneficial to learn what I'm about to show you. The reason for showing you how the car turns in every direction while holding air roll is not how the car turns depending on your input. Instead, it's to show you that regardless of your choice of stick direction, because you're holding down directional air roll, your car will always turn 360 degrees on whatever axis of input you've set it on, provided you don't change or remove any inputs. So if I hold down air roll left, jump and push my stick down, my car will always come back to the place it started. If at any point I change the direction of my left stick, it will alter the course of the spin and thus not complete a full revelation. Not super mind blowing stuff, but it's important to understand this one concept before we move forward. Let's return back to the hover drill. 
If you're holding your car perfectly straight up and down in the air, then the only input required to keep your car up is to boost. From here, we can now incorporate our directional air roll. If it begins to tilt in any one direction, simply let go of air roll and reorientate your car to be back in the straight up and down position. Once you get the feel and timing between your puffs of boost in order to keep the car up, let's begin adding some stick inputs as well to our directional air roll. Holding my left stick to the right while I air roll left, I'm now hovering and performing a tornado spin in place. If you notice, the car will constantly fly in whatever direction it is moving in when I started gaining momentum. Hence why I can fly from one end of the field to the other tornado spinning because that's the way the car is being carried by the boost. Cool, but how do we make the car move the way we want it to move? This is where it all comes together and I hope you'll see why. As we watch our car rotate around on its Z axis, we watch as the nose and the back end of the car turn 360 degrees but in opposite direction. Paying attention to these two things can be hard to do so that's why we're going to have to learn how to steer the car using only one stick input at a time. That's right. You can fly around the pitch, going either left or right with a single stick direction. But how? You do so by only doing two things, pushing the stick down and to the right, and boosting. The trick is only doing so when you need to change direction. Let me show you how this works. Like we looked at before, your car is going to turn 360 degrees from whichever point you started turning, so all you have to do is simply wait for the car's rotation to reach the point you need to adjust and boost in that direction. It's a stupid joke, but it applies here perfectly. Two wrongs don't make a right, but three lefts do. So if you can't make an immediate left, all you have to do is wait for the car to be back in the position for it to do so. This part will take the longest to learn. As daunting as it might sound, I was able to pick this up in a couple of days of two or three hour play sessions. Nothing super drastic. Just casually jumping on and practicing when I had free time. In general, you definitely want to remember that when you're using directional air roll, you want to be moving your left stick a lot. Now, this isn't wrong like I said, but you can't create muscle memory without a foundation of movement to build it from. I believe if you want to learn this mechanic, these are the steps that are going to get you there the most effective and efficient ways. Constantly needing to move and adjust your left stick is a misleading sentiment and a misconception amongst all the content I've seen on this mechanic. I 100% agree there is always more than one way to skin a cat as it were, which is why I just knew there had to be another way to learn this. The reason for learning how to control your car with a single directional input is to familiarize yourself with both your car's rotation, rotational states, orientation, and how to control it, and you get all of these things in this one single exercise. I believe the single most impactful aspect is simply gaining an understanding of fail states. Fail state is a point in which you black out or lose total control of the car and fail to keep it in the air. The two easiest ways to combat this happening in the earliest levels of training this are to either stop holding your left stick and let the car roll back to an orientation you're familiar with and catch it if you will in order to get back into controlling the spin, or simply let go of air roll altogether and catch the car and regain control at that point. There are times in which completely letting go of your air roll or left stick is somewhat necessary to maintain control, so don't feel like doing so is failing. Whatever is going to keep your car in the air is permissible. Once you get the feeling and timing down for turning your car either left or right using a single stick input and boosting, you can then begin to get a feel for when to boost forward and backwards. These steps are what you are going to need in order to either catch up to the ball or kill your momentum in the air. Like I said, this part will be the hardest to grasp, but once you do, learning the other directional inputs will feel like you're already two steps ahead when you get there. After some time of steering with your stick down into the right or down into the left if you're using air roll right, it's time to start incorporating other directional inputs. For me, I found up into the right worked well because it was already in line with the rotational orientation I was used to and was able to find my moments in which I could use it to maintain control. At this point, you want to be practicing and familiarizing yourself with what your car does depending on its orientation to you, whether that be the car's hood facing you, away from you, or either its left or right side. This is the only part that I feel can't really be simply taught with a specific stick input because at any point, your need to move left, right, backwards, or forwards is ever-changing and to try and claim a single static input is correct just simply wouldn't be. This is why spending time on a single directional input will expedite this process, just making yourself aware of what your car is doing while it's spinning and accounting for only one directional change helps understand when and where you need to be adjusting to fly in the direction you need. As you can see here, I'm flying through these rings only using directional air roll left and pressing my stick down and to the right. 
Even if you have access to workshop maps on PC, unlike the console players, I encourage everyone to spend time in the Pillars map that can be accessed from the free play menu here. A lot of creators recommend flying around the map in a figure eight pattern, and I agree that is good practice, but I would suggest just flying around the outer portion of the map in one direction first. Again, this can all be done using air roll and a single directional input on the analog stick. If you look at my overlay, you can see I'm almost exclusively using down and to the right on my stick and adjusting and boosting only when my car is in the correct direction. I'm able to maintain a constant leftward movement around the map. After you've put some time into flying around the map and adjusting with a single stick input, I would suggest trying the same thing but with different directions. Like I mentioned, I naturally worked in up and to the right on my stick and in no time I was able to fly around with only that directional input alone. This is going to be the absolute quickest way to learn this mechanic because instead of trying to memorize what to do in every situation, your brain will begin to make connections intuitively and that muscle memory will begin to form naturally. That said, there are a few little tips and tricks I would like to share in terms of aerial car control that I believe can be used in almost any situation. First up is going to be fast aerials. We all know to jump, hold back, boost, and jump again, but if you watch a lot of high level play, you'll notice a lot of people jump into the air and air roll to get up to the ball. This technique isn't inherently faster, but what it does do is set you up to be able to adjust depending on the direction and speed of the ball. A good tip for this is to start your double jump aerial and quickly begin a tornado spin by holding down your directional air roll and pressing your stick in the opposite direction of that air roll's rotation. This will immediately point the nose of your car up into the air. Then once your car is moving upward, the best thing you can do is simply stop moving your stick and let your car air roll as it goes upward. If adjustments are needed, it's best to make the smallest ones possible as to not disrupt the upward momentum or send your car offline from its initial target. Next is going to be knowing how to slow down in the air when flying towards the ball or a target point. This mostly comes down to timing and knowing when to boost in relation to where the back of your car is facing. If you've been focusing on a single stick input, then you've probably begun to see the moments whether on purpose or on accident. If you're using air roll left, simply applying that down and to the right on your stick is a great way to spin the car into a position that allows you to catch the car and begin boosting backwards to slow down. Obviously this is good for the rings and pillars map, but it's super helpful in game situations where you go for a ball, realize you have too much speed, and need to make an in-air adjustment in order to make contact that you need. So now we've reached the end of the video where I tell you to go out and practice flying around, but I'm aware that all we want to do is just hit nasty air dribbles and clip on people. I get it. That's going to come with time. The second hardest part about this mechanic is not just understanding how to fly and control your car in the air, but how to do so when you're trying to also control a ball. This is something that I'm going to cover in my next video, so I hope you'll subscribe and come back when that's uploaded. I have a lot of in-depth information about that topic as well, and I hope to be able to break it down as simply and effectively as we've done here with directional air roll. So get to work learning air roll, and I'll see you guys in the next one.